Where is InsureTech headed next? This is where indie agents own the answer. Welcome to the Vertifor Insurance Podcast. Let's go. Insurance industry, welcome back to another episode of the Vertifor Insurance Podcast. So pumped to have the mm-hmm. pump man himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On season two, Jason Cass, welcome. welcome. Yeah, season two, season two. I'm, I, how did season one go? I mean, tell me about what did that look like, Sid? Well, I don't know if you were on, so I, I, I don't even know if it's worth talking about, man. Right. Well, that that's kind of where I was alluding to. But no, I mean, no, the, the thing is, is that, I mean, those are exciting when those go and not everybody breaks them into seasons. Mm. So I didn't know if you did like eight or 10 or 20 or whatever like that, you know? You know, I don't know what we hit in terms of episode count for episode uh, for season one. I know mm-hmm. Rick put some serious grind into it, but the passing mm-hmm. of the torch from him to me is why I wanted to restart things. Let's I tried to listen. I tried to rename it. I tried mm-hmm. to rename it, but as things go at in in Goliath companies, it was That's it set was off a say. lot of alarm bells. So uh, it would have to, yeah, and it doesn't matter if it was John Smith's show. It would have had to go up seven rows to legal, and they would have had to battle it and say, "Is is Smith ever a racist name or something?" They, they would have to do something. I mean, this is what every corporation has to do. But you know what? You don't get to be called the big orange and awesome unless you've got your in order and they do so that's, that's true the stuff. they are doing something right i guess they, I, should, I, I guess i should say we are doing something right doing something right that's right doing something right that's right well for those of you guys who don't know who jason is let me give you a quick intro man <laughs> i i assumed that most people listening knew who you were so that's why i didn't go into it but you know there's always those one or two people that don't know how to spell podcast and they they, mm-hmm. they tune in onto a random episode, and I can't tell you how excited I am that you're here for this particular episode because it's a good okay. one to start with. Uh, it is. Mr. Cass, capital C, mm-hmm. is a self, self-proclaimed self entrepreneur, speaker, author, and host of the Agency Intelligence Podcast, as well as, and this wasn't on your LinkedIn, interestingly, but the founder of the Insurance Alliance. And let me give you guys just... A, a quick look um, behind the scenes. Jason yeah. is is one of those guys who has been in the industry for a, a very long time, um, but mm-hmm. the way that he has navigated the industry and what he's brought to the table every day has been mm-hmm. so consistently um, impactful, right? I mean, mm-hmm. dude, when, mm-hmm. you, when you made that commitment to yourself, and I know it was... I know there was a moment in time. I don't know mm-hmm. what exactly what that moment in time looked like for you, but mm-hmm. when there was that commitment you made to the insurance industry to say I'm digging in, and I'm mm-hmm. gonna I'm gonna lift this industry up, and I'm gonna do everything in my power to help other agents like me, um, mm-hmm. it, it kind of started a tidal wave. So I yeah, I think it did too. I I agree. I agree. And and you've been very consistent about just being you. Um, and staying true to that mission of, of helping those around you, whether that's through right. the podcast, speaking, meeting with people one-on-one, taking phone calls, joining different projects, investing in mm-hmm. different startups, um, and really even you know taking in and using your agency as a lab for some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pumped, man. I'm just pumped to have you on. From day one, the mission has and the mission continues to be to give forward momentum and change to the greatest industry God ever created by giving a voice to those who have no voice. From 2013, I was watching Pierce Morgan and Rick Morgan, or I'm sorry, not Rick Morgan, Pierce Morgan and um, Rick Warren from Saddleback Church. And I won't go into that right now. I've talked about it with my podcast listeners, but that is this, I would say it was probably like the second week in December of 2012. And then it took me a while to put it together. And as exciting as it is, and then we can go on, uh, it is a proud moment of mine. I try not to, I try to, 
you know, just see the other stuff that I've done as, as a necessity to what the agency or the industry needs. And a lot of the stuff is born in my own agency. And then I see the impact of it, just like agency zoom. And I want to tell everybody about it, you know, so those are the, the those are some of the things and I can't remember, I was going to, I was going to jump onto something else, but we'll, it'll come back up here in a little bit. But, uh, Sid, thank you very much for that. Oh, excuse me. I remember what it was, and it's kind of a big deal. The uh, March of 2023, in two months, uh, March 22nd, I released my first podcast. Um, so that was 10 years ago. Whoa. I do not know. It's very tough for my team to get, but I think it's it's. It, we know it's over 800 podcasts. We just don't know if it's 824 or 873, right? Mm -hmm. But we do know it's over that. Um uh, I think uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of over a million, million point two da uh, listens, which mm -hmm. is not just downloads. My downloads are way higher than that. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm I'm super excited about that. And uh, we have around 70,000 um, uh, listens uh, a month mm -hmm. of people who are down listening to us. So it's just not me. It's a big network that we have. So I encourage anybody, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably should be listening to the insurancepodcastnetwork.com. Um, and it's also orange because I like orange. I was going to say you you definitely wore the orange shirt intentionally today, right? That was I, a... Tia's orange. I've been with AMS 360 since my very first day in the business. Well, no, I've been with Vertifor because I left AMS 360 for QQ. But I've been with Vertifor the whole time. Even when I left and went to another management system for two years and God, I came running back. I still actually kept Vertifor because we still had to do things in it because the other system wasn't built out yet. So yeah, so been paying Vertifor happily for 12 years. Hey, I want to dig into that that tech stat conversation in just a sec. But before we do, let's okay. step back for a sec, because talking about impact, talking about the podcast that you're running, you know, you do mm -hmm. more than that. Uh, I don't know how you find time in the day for all this stuff. Mm -hmm. In addition to, you know, being that thought leader, you've got Brainshare, which is, is kind of a mastermind event, small group, invite mm -hmm. only. Uh, mm -hmm. you're, you're breaking some new ground in the insurance conference space this year. So tell me mm -hmm. a little bit about what that is. Um, you know, why, why, what, where you're fine. I would love to find, know where you're finding the time for all this stuff, mm -hmm. but give me the, give me the down low on that. With Indie Tech, I have a, uh, an, a, a subcommittee, a committee of this of 23 people. It's me and Mitch Gibson, and we're kind of like the ringleaders who have come up with this crazy ass idea because we've realized this, this is needed in the insurance industry. Not another conference is needed, neither another event, mm -hmm. but a showcase of what's happening. Now, this is the most exciting thing that I've probably done yet. And it's also the most scariest. When I'm when I'm signing contracts for over three hundred thousand dollars, that's more than my house. Right. That 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 right there will make you sweat. That right there will make you say, am I going to do it? And a guy said to me this morning, he said, Jason, what you're doing is a power move. I never really thought of it that way. I just thought it as this needs created. But what it has done is that I think it's going to bring agency intelligence a little bit more to the front to the front line to let everybody see all the stuff that we do. So here's the deal. Back in 2014, I wrote a book and I realized now that I was eight years too early. And inside the book, if you see it, it's called the um, it's called uh, customer service is just foreplay. It's the modern customer experience that'll separate you. And in this book, if you're watching it on YouTube, I took the modern customer experience and I broke it into six sections from when someone first hears my name or my agency's name to the very end of the process where they're buying multiple products from us and giving us referrals. Right. So I thought to myself, how many times has someone come up to me and say, Jason, where do you guys use WonderWrite in your agency? Jason, where do you guys use agency Zoom in the process of your agency? So what I decided was, is we were going to create the customer experience and that's what Indie Tech is. So as an attendee, when you come to Indie Tech, and I'm going to tell you, this is the first podcast this is being talked about on, very first one. Now it's coming out in March, so other people may know, but attendees may not know all the details like this. As you come in, you can go anywhere you want in the show floor and the showcase, right? You can just like any conference, but there's also a designated area, which is a big, huge circle, kind of like the Indianapolis 500. And it's a big circle. And you start out in the qualifying stage. You go to the lead generation stage, then to the converting leads, and then to quoting mm -hmm. the sale, then to onboarding and servicing, then to cross sales and referrals. 
you walk through the customer journey experiencing the technology that you need at that point in the journey right mm -hmm. and then how about having signs on those things that say this is who we integrate with mm -hmm. right and then and so you know so we're getting the vendors together we're creating things for the vendors we've created a path to where there's a place that you can have a booth right for a very economical uh, 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 cost the point is is to get people here so that we can showcase indie technology not insure tech indie technology Someone can go there and say, hey, tell me about Agency Zoom. And maybe the person starts giving them a two or three minute spiel. But instead of missing all the people walking by, they say, hey, we're having a demo down on the end stage. We have large demo stages that are going to hold to where you then can, as an attendee, can go see that product um, demoed. You'll be getting texts, hey, demo start in 15 minutes, different things like that. Mm. And then there's designated areas where then you say, hey, I want to buy this agency Zoom. You then can go to a designated area and try to finish the process. I want a process for the attendee. I want a process mm -hmm. for the vendor because this is just as much about the vendors as it is the attendees. Like they need to get out there. I'm looking for the spots. I've created little bitty um, lemonade stands for those big, those companies that talking to a company the other day they said, Jason, we have less than $5,000, $50,000 in revenue over the last year. We're a true startup, right? Wow. Yeah. Well, they need a spot. So I've created like little lemonade stands for those people to be involved, right? Mm -hmm. In the afternoon, we've got tracks going through where you'll be able to learn, create, and execute anything that has to do with technology. Vertifor is going to be there and they're going to be showing you how to maximize your tech stack. They're going to be showing you how to clean your data. I'm speaking on behalf of Vertifor, but these are the type of things that these vendors will be doing. Last but not least, we're going to be having um, a podcast going on live with interviews that are going out to over 20 locations across the inter insurance industry. We're recording those and putting on the AI um, podcast network. Uh, we're having a big band come in on Wednesday. We're expecting anywhere between 500 and 750 people. Now, that's a lot, but we've got a group of 23 people that I've delegated it to. And I'll wrap up by saying this about delegation. A wise man told me this. He was a four-star uh, Navy uh, admiral. And he told me this a long time ago. He said, Jason, there are three things in this world that you, um, you could, should delegate everything in your life except for these three things. Nobody can delegate these three things. And he said, number one is your relationships, okay? Mm -hmm. You cannot delegate your relationships, your knowledge. Can't delegate your knowledge. And he said, your legal responsibilities. But everything else in your life, you should delegate. I liked that. And I took that to heart. And I tried to build my life around that to where instead of dealing with all the businesses, I'm dealing with four or five people who I've trusted and are making lots of money and building their own things outside of that. That's what gets me gets me going. That's so that's Indie Tech, and it's happening March 29th, 30th, and 31st in Indianapolis, Indiana. It, come on, you guys gotta love the the marketing. Indianapolis, Indiana, Indie Tech, Independence, <laughs> right? It is, it's unbelievable. I know, I know. So many glasses of wine. <laughs> so. Um... This was a concept born out of frustration, it sounds like. It this was. Is, this, this wasn't, this isn't a, I'm bored. This isn't a, uh, you know, I want to throw a big party for friends. This isn't, uh, you know, I need something else to do and I'm not satisfied with the podcast <laughs> or whatever it is, right? This is, <laughs> I see a problem, which is, agencies trying to figure out how to piece these different, you know, the puzzle together, the puzzle being different insure tech mm -hmm. solutions. And I don't know how to do it. Like what integrates with what, how do mm -hmm. I integrate stuff? How does it affect my workflow? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it all tie into my AMS? Is my team going to freak out? Am I making, right. how do I measure ROI when I have all these separate Data I have 143 indie tech companies that we're reaching out to. No agency out there knows more than probably 10 to 15. Mm -hmm. 143 companies out there mm -hmm. that they're not getting, they're not in, they're not in sure tech. They're mm -hmm. not digging in with the big brokers. Let me mm -hmm. tell you something, Sydney. This is this is where this came from. Sitting in the back of an act meeting, 
You know, I had just been to ITC, my business partner that we went with, we only go there, it has nothing to do with independent insurance agents, but we, we go, there's networking that we do. He got sick. So I started thinking of this indie tech there and I, I went to it and then I walked around for four or five hours just writing things out, seeing what they're doing, what's working, because it really was awesome. I just didn't have anything to do with independent agents. Then I went to another conference that was unbelievable in our insurance industry and they were high tech. And I thought to myself, we can mix this. And that's where we started. But here's one thing that every one of your listeners needs to know. And this is this is such good news. This is such good news. Let's take that that customer journey and let's talk about that again. Let's split it in half at the sale, right? Mm -hmm. There's before the sale, after the sale. Mm -hmm. Before the sale, Insure tech, that's where they helped us, right? That's where they helped us with some CRM, some lead generation, some um, uh, yeah, the converting leads, a lot of different different things that they did. But guess what? They did that and they were good at it because every sales organization in any, any industry needs those things. So we call that, in my opinion, Insure Tech 1.0 because it's fading and it's fading quick because where they made the mistake was in 2017 and 2018 when they started coming about the Insure Techs, they jumped into, I don't want to say that, they um, jumped into partnerships with uh, carriers and that's where they made the mistake. They made the mistake because they thought they had a lot of money, but they didn't realize out of the 2,500, only 500 of them actually have any interest in digitalizing right now. Okay, And of those 500, they're all on different systems. So yes, while the well may be deep, the scale is not there. Mm -hmm. And so they've realized that, and it's too expensive, and you see them buying each other up. They've realized now, as they thought we were going to put us out of business, they realize now that we're the best distribution system. That's a constant thing in our industry, right? Mm -hmm. But they've also realized that we have deep pockets too. And they've also realized that you can scale us. Let's just, I'm making this up. Let's say there's 15,000 agencies on, on Vertifor. That's scalable, mm -hmm. right? Let's say that there's, there's 4,000 on Applied. That's scalable, right? You can scale that. And I think they're starting to see that. Here's what we need them for. If you take the sale and you go after the sale, you can't be insure tech. You can't come from the outside and possibly understand that. Mm. You need to mm. know that system. You have to know the services. You have to know the commissions. You have to know the claims. You have to know the processes. You have to know the communications with the carrier versus the communications with the insureds, right? Mm -hmm. You have to know that stuff. And you just can't be for someone. And other sales organizations are not like that. This is the rise of indie tech. Because those who are making technology currently for independents, like Vertifor, like all the others out there, right? Or the agents who are working in an agency who have created technology for themselves and are now telling the world. Mm -hmm. These are the people that need to be recognized. Mm -hmm. And this is the rise of indie tech. And I saw it sitting in the back of an ACT meeting after I'd been to ITC. And I thought to myself, this is it. I'm doing it. And my mm -hmm. business partner said, oh my God, Jason. What in the hell? He said, how are you going to do this? I said, we can do it. I can't do it myself, but we're going to form a huge committee. We're going to get people to see the vision and we're going to make this shit happen. Mm -hmm. Mar our, May our August 29th, 30th, and 31st. I might've said March before that's brain share. Uh, August 29th, 30th, and 31st. You can go to IndieTech2023.com and get on the list and find out all about the goods. It's actually, if this is coming out, I don't know when, Sin, but I just tell you listeners right now, if it's after March 1st, the registration's already open. Yeah. Sorry, I, Sid. I, I know I went on along there, but no, you can tell I got a passion there, buddy. Babe. Li li listen, <laughs> listen, listen. I'm glad that you do um, because I think there's a gap here. And that that's what I want people to hear is, okay, so where where do you go to learn about technology, right? I think you've, you've got ITC, but to your point, it's overwhelming. I mean, I think there's 6,000 people that showed up there this past year. It's nine. Um, and Sydney, there's not one thing to do with independent agents. I mean, not one. I promise you. I've yeah. been there three times now, and yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah. It is a very carrier-centric, carrier-focused con mm -hmm. conference. And a lot of, I think, insure tech companies trying to meet with people that are looking for funding, right? That's right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you've exactly got right, Sid. you've got state associations which do a great job bringing agencies together, but I do think struggle a little bit with the technology piece. You've got, you know, obviously bit the Goliaths in the industry, us uh, applied that do sort of user conferences, 
and we, we, you know, we, we bring people in and we say, hey, here's how to use these systems. Um, but from a decision-making perspective, before using the system, which system do I buy? Which system is right for me? How do I piece them together? You know, I, I do want to see that sort of, I, I want to see a showcase. I would love to go yeah. to one place where I can see everything and say, okay, let me, let me talk to other agencies who are in this decision-making process like myself. Let's mm -hmm. hear the pitch from the different technology companies and let's really have a conversation on, you know, how this stuff is brought together. I, I'll say one it, last thing, because I don't, listen, mm -hmm. man, you got me on a soapbox, mm -hmm. okay? It's fun. One last thing. It is the responsibility of technology companies, not agencies, to figure out how to work together. I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. It is the responsibility of technology companies, not agencies, to figure out how to work together. as something we've struggled with in the insurance industry. I, it's changing, and it's changing slower than I'd like. It's changing. But, but that right there, if we, can, if we can seize that opportunity, I think mm -hmm. whoever does, there's a, mm -hmm. there's a very quick ramp to the top. Sydney, Sydney, listen to this, but there's a part here that we're not thinking about, right? There's a part here. There's a um, insured mind user out there who mm -hmm. loves insured mind and is looking for a management system and needs to know that Vertifor works really good with them as an orange partner. Yep. It's Switzerland. Mm -hmm. There's a side name in Indy by when we say independence. This, this, this meeting has no claim to anybody. It's AI because AI is main part of foot in the foot in the bill. But this is not it, this is not applied's thing. This is not Vertifor's thing. This is not a, you know insured minds thing. It's not what it is. Is that's why I said we want to know. I want Vertifor to be like this is who we uh, connect with, right? These are our orange partners that are right there. Oh, well, it's on our website, Jason. People don't know that they came here for a tech conference. Let's, and that's what we're trying to do. Also, part of the committee, I have two people. Danny Lawrence is leading it from one to right. He's actually going to work with the exhibitors and have conference calls with them to try and get them to coordinate their efforts so that it's not so spread out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, we'll talk about that later. But okay. yes, this All is right. this is fantastic and fun. I, I'm having a time of my life on it. Awesome, awesome, man. I'm I'm excited to see. And this will be the first year, so you know there's always mm -hmm. a big. So it could be a freaking bomb. But we're gonna try. <laughs> we're gonna try, Cindy. Here we go. <laughs> here's what here's what I've learned about conferences. The first year is actually the easiest. The second year, it's true. Is is you know okay? You gain some momentum. There are people who heard mm -hmm. good things about the first year. They're coming. Third year, if you mm -hmm. can make it past what is that'll be 2025. If you can yeah. make it to 2025 and still stay strong, like golden. But Hopefully. that that third year is I yeah. in in with it's elevate tough. yeah with elevate uh, you know I've seen it with uh, IAOA I mean the conferences that have popped up here and there like if that third year is that that challenge so mm -hmm. I'm excited for this year man I, I feel like it's going to be it's rock. yeah you'll be there we'll yeah. have fun I will yes Vertifor will be there we'll be mm -hmm. talking to we're going to highlight um, agency Zoom uh, I, I think. A you lot. guys are really proud of that right now. I mean, you're really carrying yeah. that flag, Sydney. Yeah, I think agency Zoom is one of those technologies that I mean, to me, it's at the cusp, and it and it has this ability to bridge. It there's a lot of complexity in it, but it's still a very simple system, which is hard to do. So kudos to Mo for the way he built it out. Like it's not easy. Um, I think you take like a, a Salesforce, which can do a lot of things, but it's really complicated. Um, inexpensive yeah or you take a simple system that can't do a lot and then you're stuck with a ceiling i think right. agency zoom kind of sits in that middle spot and it connects with everything right i mean we took a very hard stance at acquisition to say we're not we're still integrated with hawksoft and and man i'd even go so far as to say the integration with hawksoft at least in this moment in time watch out in 20 later in 2023 but at this moment in time is is slightly better than some of the other systems right you so, just got promoted you got demoted <laughs> <laughs> uh, so but that that's because of the work that you know that that hawksoft and, and agency zoom have been doing together so um right. there's a real there's a real change happening inside the company to say um you know we we want to make sure that the systems an agency chooses 
uh, mm -hmm. work together and they have the freedom to, to choose those systems, right? Doesn't mean People that who listen... Doesn't mean Go we're ahead, not going to kick, kick some butt on our own systems. And believe me, that's coming in 2023. Um, I think so. people need to understand, though, being an agency owner at 2010, mm -hmm. that um, the, uh, coming in, such uh, not a lot of difference between a vertiform and applied, right? Just mm -hmm. two mammoths who have a great system, different cultures. But that's what the difference was. Around 2013, 2014, when you guys bought out QQ, for all you agency owners who don't know and have been in the business for less than 10 years, this is what happened. When they bought QQ in 2014, 2015-ish, that set the the rabbit and the hare being, or the what would it be, the hound and the hare, uh, chasing each other. And you guys were the hare and they were starting to try and chase you because, and because what happened was when you took that, you realized, hey, AMS 360 is great. It's our flagship. It's boom, 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 boom. But we need to actually have maybe more technology, more APIs. But it was more of there's a person out there, an agency that's three, four, five, six, seven. They need to be serviced too. And maybe AMS 360 is too much. What does that mean? It means you were listening to your agents. And then guess what happened? Boom, your competitors, they now start to buy out the little ones, right? Then you can say commercial submissions, some of the things you guys came up with first. Boom, they go out and buy commercial submission type, type companies. Boom, you guys start looking at your own raiders and your own raider that you have. Boom, they start going out and buying raiders. You can start seeing that all along. And now we, we the cusp of this is the CRM. The ball's in their court. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I personally, we're not going to go there cause I could get in trouble, but I personally, in Jason's mind, sitting out, looking at his lake would have many glasses of wine, piecing things together. I think I know what the next step is, but the point of the story is they're constantly chasing the, the start of QQ broke you guys apart. And also culturally you guys spit, split. And when I say this, I'm not, I'm, I'm not downing anybody. It's just a looking at two companies as an insurance agent who's a geek at this stuff. Theirs came more inclusive. Your guys' became more open. That started off with the thought of buying QQ, okay? Understanding mm -hmm. that they had a marketplace. People don't realize that mm -hmm. they were one of the very first companies that had a marketplace that you could hook your phone in and all that stuff mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So now we see that still progressing. And what's amazing is when I'm talking to the CEO of Applied, he says to me, their main goal is to get their system open. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy because that's been the culture Mm -hmm. of the big of the of the big orange the whole time it, it, so it's, it's 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 a great little story if you look at it and no, know the history it is crazy that you say that that's actually the reason i came to vertifor was the the hard part with vertifor is not that the work hasn't been done it, we have opposite problems the story is being told really really well elsewhere in the industry but the work hasn't so caught up with it the so the, so the, right. the work has already been done i mean we have 40 plus orange partners the amount at this point, there are in totality across all the different systems, not just agency management systems, over 500 live APIs. I actually had a crazy idea to want to hook up a Twitter account to our API network so that you could see all the data that was going out in real time. Now, that might be a terrible thing. We'd probably flood Twitter because we do send a lot of data out of our systems into our other systems and into systems that aren't ours. That's interesting. Right? Right? Mm -hmm. um, but... But yeah, there's there's there was this gap around telling that story. And that's that's really why I came was to say, hey, I see the work that you guys are doing. Not to say that it's perfect. There's always work to be done, and that's the exciting part is that we've a team now that's digging in and you know, sees the mm -hmm. opportunity for even more. Um, but hey, if you're out there and you're listening to this, if you see me at a conference or anything, walk by me and give me a high five and say big orange. Okay. From now on, just big orange. <laughs> just let me know that you, that lets me know you're a big orange user guys that that's vertifor. That's what that means. If you haven't figured that out yet. And you're also listening to this podcast. So just give me a high five, say big orange everywhere we go from now on, Sydney. That's what we got to start it. doing. I love it, dude. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Let me yeah. put a bow on this because Come on. We are really excited to be at Indie Tech this coming year. So cool. best of luck to you as you wrap things up and, you know, mm -hmm. ramp up. Um, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see how it all turns out. If you haven't yet been to Austin, Texas between May 7th to the 10th, consider this your official invitation. Accelerate is the largest gathering of Vertifor users from around the country. And no matter if you're looking to be challenged,
challenged by hearing the stories of successful owners who did things a bit differently, see cutting edge solutions thanks to the implosion of the InsureTech ecosystem, or learn how you can maximize your current Vertifor tech stack. Accelerate has it all. So go to accelerate.netview.org, put it in your phone, put it in your computer, wherever you are, accelerate.netview.org, grab your ticket and join us in the live music capital. So, okay, let me, let me ask, let me ask another question here. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the issues with the industry and the, or I should say the challenges with the industry really around ta technology. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about your tech stack. Like what is going on inside of Jason Cass's, you know, technology suites? I know that you- You should start that question by asking anybody that go, why don't you show me your tech stack? You know, no, no, I'm just joking. I'm talking about technology, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bad reference. Sorry. Anyway, so, okay, so Sydney, let me tell you this. My tech stack is yeah. fan freaking tastic. It was a nightmare, a nightmare um, a couple years ago. And we're not here to talk about that. It was just really expensive and very difficult to get anything connected. Let's mm -hmm. just say that. Yeah. Um, and, but everything was possible. It was just very, very expensive. I'm talking $150, $200 an hour for people to do stuff that they tell you it's going to take 35 to 40 hours. You're mm -hmm. like, oh. Yep. And then there's an ongoing charge. charge. Yeah. So my tech stack is unbelievable. AZ has been the missing piece. Um, we went out um, and we decided to make, once we got the COO, um, somebody who could actually, for all you agency owners who are out there, that's what you got to understand. You don't have time to do this because you got to get somebody to do it. You got to delegate? The, is that what you're you saying? You got to delegate. You got to delegate. You know, you, you, it, I just know I'm bad at it. I'm just bad at it. I mean, I, I'm here for my business, not my ego. And so Jeremy has absolutely kicked this thing's butt. I mean, kicked its butt. So for instance, in our commercial, yes, for everybody out there, we are, th let's put it this way. Our revenue um, is about 80% commercial and, and our revenue overall is about 20% personal, okay, for everybody out there. But our policy count is around 60% personal. We write very large accounts. So that's another thing as well. We write small accounts, but we write accounts anywhere between 150 to 450,000 in revenue. I'm, I'm just not in revenue, in, in uh, premium. That's our bre bread and butter. That's where we like to fish. So QQ, we do that on it. We do COIs on QQ. We do accords. Not so much accords we do, but Wonderwrite is somebody that we use that needs to be hooked into. Uh, mm -hmm. Working on it, working on it, working on it. Yeah, I bet you are, because that shit is awesome. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you this. So my guys are sitting there. They have these uh, these little what we call pipelines. My guys now, and my personal lines are similar, but I'll give you my commercial lines, everybody. It drops in. They've got these little leads. They're working them through. Hey, I called them. Got to call them back. This is a prospect. When they get to the quoting section, they can drop it into the quoting area, and it brings it over to to another pipeline that says it's the new business pipeline and collecting info. Whenever they drop it in there and they hit the button, it immediately creates a to-do that was already set up. This is all automated and boom, pops up and tells the producer everything that we're going to need. The producer answers all of those questions, slides it over into the next one and it sends a to-do, boom, to our CSR, everything that needs to be done, right? Then they slide it back. That goes to another person that creates the presentation, slides it over a little more, goes back to the agent agent now has a list of things they have to do if they sell it they have they drop it over into this thing right this is how this goes now at the end when we sell it we're going to drop it over and then it's going to go over into our renewal pipeline and it's going to pop in there in 45 days it's also going to be sending notifications over to service so service can follow up make sure the downloads are coming through make sure that the check the caches are, are the the money's collected and because the automation is already set up with an e-pay policy link my people are just telling them what the down payment is and what the policy fee is and we're subtracting it out of that so these are the things that we could never put together because it was like i gotta go here and get this and then what am i supposed to do oh yeah i gotta go get the epay policy link and oh yeah then i gotta drive that over there and yeah then i gotta do that if you're listening to this podcast and you're in an agency you're you know exactly what i'm talking about right now but guess what all it comes now is jeremy says you just slide it over 
and it pop up and tell you what the hell to do. Mm -hmm. Jeremy came, he, Jeremy worked for Amtrak for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, he was at a high level. They, they promoted him quickly and he was, he actually didn't work for Amtrak. He worked for their administrative part during COVID. He left. He's a very good friend of mine. And I said, bro, why don't you come in? He did personal lines for a year for us. And I was like, oh, bro, you, 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 you got to be doing other things in our office. Like you are way too good at this. But now we have this process. We have the same thing on personal lines. I mean, it's all the same stuff that we do. Um, we've built out our service center. This is all the areas that QQ was really weak in. They were really, really weak in all and having all these things. Whoever saw Agency Zoom and said, holy shit, this will match perfectly with our systems, QQ, or I don't know if it works with AMS 360. I, I don't know. Um, they, they they did a great job. This was a, this was a home run. And... Um, I'll tell you, we we ran out. We hired Austin Moorhead. It's what we did, um, and I'm very mm -hmm. proud of him. He works for a lot of agencies. He already has all the automations built for Agency Zoom. He deals with millions of dollars in premium monthly, and he set it all up for us. And we trusted him, and we went in and made some adjustments. But um, I just can't tell you. I mean, I cannot tell you how awesome that product is. And WonderWrite is in the middle of there on the way we connect our apps. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking with uh, QQ and Vertifor to say, hey, this is how we want this to go right there because mm -hmm. then it flows in and flows right back out. You don't even truly know that you might've been in Vertifor. Mm -hmm. And what we're really excited about is the new system that's coming out to where you're not gonna be in multiple systems. It's gonna be all integrated into one. Mm -hmm. um, Rick showed me that last year. Mm -hmm. um, he said, it. He said, Jason, it'll be out at this time. And I said, we'll take that times two because you're a tech <laughs> company, any tech company. It's like a, it's like a guy yeah. building a home, right? Yeah. yeah, I'll be done in five months. Okay, you'll be done in 10 months, Yeah, you know, so same. yeah thing That's so true. anything else you want to know we absolutely love it i mean we we have a love affair now with agency zoom and that's why i was poking on you a minute ago and saying boy you guys keep leading with that well that's all we lead with as, as well yeah you know yeah it's interesting um so we've started to do this new series and this is i actually um I'm really going to have you on the hook now because I'm asking you live on the podcast, but I would love for you to showcase your tech stack. Or maybe if Jeremy wants to showcase how you use, you know, and it doesn't have Anytime. to be agency no. Zoom, but for those of you guys listening to this podcast, Anytime. here's here's what we want to start doing at Vertifor. Um, you know, it's one thing to get on the phone with, uh, you know, one, somebody from our sales team. They're amazing. You know, they can talk to you about the challenges and different pain points that you have and kind of match you to the right tech and they can give you demos. But it's something different seeing that technology come to life in a real agency environment. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is feature every two months, we'll feature a different agent. Um, so starting with you want to talk to like, Hey, what technology are you using? And here's the thing. It's not all Vertifor technology. You mentioned wonder, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So how does yes. that fit into wait? What, so are we going in out of that? Is it, is it sitting in the back end? Are we using the UX? How does it all mm -hmm. work together? Um, yep. right. So, so talking to that and then, uh, at the end of the two months, you know, we'll do a podcast at the end of the two months, we'll do a webinar where someone's coming on and showing the technology and, and you guys listening mm -hmm. can ask questions and, you know, he hear the use cases and how it works and what maybe Sydney, isn't working. Sydney, well. we'll bring on my COO, my personal lines and my commercial yes. lines people, and they'll tell you all how they use it and mix it up and do this and that. I'll, I'll awesome. have them all on there. Awesome. And I mean, it'll be real life people talking about like, I just got out of agency Zoom doing this kind awesome. of stuff. Awesome. Okay? Awesome. Okay. So let I got to admit, they, they do do way more of it than I do. I'm barely <laughs> in the damn thing. So. so how many pieces of tech do you think It'll be interesting to see what you say, and then we'll ask Jeremy on the webinar. What? How many pieces of tech do you think you have in your agency today? Only way I'd know is, like you say, is because I see the bills come through quarterly. <laughs> That's right. Um, um, no, That's I do. I do know. I do. I mean, the reason is, is I, you know, I built out the pipelines. They'll tell you mm -hmm. that I'm the one who built them out because I'm the guy who has the commercial mind, right? Mm -hmm. And I just sat down with my commercial people and said, okay, we do this next. Do you guys still do that? They'd like, yeah, but here's how we do it. I said, okay, now we do this next, right? Is that how you guys still do that? And 
I found out a lot of it. It don't, but loss run pro is something we use. We use, I'm going to say six to seven in the commercial new business process. Mm -hmm. Now, personal lines is different, right? We mm -hmm. don't use canopy connect for that or for a commercial, but we use that in personal lines. We use different texting features. We use sky broadcast uh, for our voicemail drops with personal lines. So commercial lines looks a lot different, right? It's, personal lines is a lot more automated. Commercial mm -hmm. lines is like 60, 70% because we still have to see the person and you don't really want to set up automations and text automations with your business clients and it's right. not yet and not all of them right yeah. Yeah. um so anyways those different types of things if i'm going to say how many pieces of technology i would be pretty correct and to say we have 15 to 20 um but let me give you an example of that when i get off this um zoom i'm going to get an email with a transcription of everything i said and everything you said all written out right that's something that sits in the back of zoom so when my agents are sitting there talking with their clients and they're collecting information, this thing is recording in the back. They get done and the whole conversation's there. That goes immediately over to the um, to the CR uh, to the account manager oh, who's writing smart. the smart who's writing smart. the description of operations that we go into the submission. But my producer's not doing that. You know what he had to do? He had to move that thing over mm -hmm. and it told the CSR exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. Right? This mm -hmm. is not made up. And you come to that thing in two months, and I promise you, I'll bring all those people on, and they'll tell you exactly how they do it. That's awesome. Okay? Awesome. I'm, I can't wait, dude. Um, so let me let me ask this on your tech stack. How? I'm because I'm assuming if you you know you're the one paying the bills, you're the one making the decisions here at the end of the mm -hmm. day. Not to say mm -hmm. other people aren't involved or influenced, but you know your mm -hmm. final hammer. I am. How do you make those decisions? Like, do you go? Do you go to ITC and see something and say, not that ITC. I know we just talked, it's not as agent focused, right? But maybe a conference like uh, North Carolina Insure Tech, right? So do you do you go to these conferences and then say... Sydney, people are going to think that we set this up, okay? okay. <laughs> people are going to think that we set this up, all right? No, we didn't. I swear, I haven't talked to Sydney, except for me hitting our LinkedIn messages, tell her she needs to quit freaking running. She, she's going to go to Mount Kilimanjaro next, and she's going to run. It's going to be unbelievable. But anyways, how do I do it? Gosh, I love this. I delegate as much as I can. And let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Brain shares coming up, right? Mm -hmm. I'm taking my entire staff. I've got three locations. I'm shutting down all three locations. I'm taking my entire staff down to New Orleans. I'm flying in there. We're all going to learn together. My VEs, they're all not going to be at work for three days. They're going to be virtual listening in there. What I did is, is two brain shows ago, I took my commercial guys and I noticed they like blew up. Because that, it just wasn't me saying it. It was other people saying it. So last year, I took my COO and boom, came back. And he's like, Cass, why are we not doing this, doing that? I'm like, dude, I didn't know we needed to do that and how to do that, right? Because I'm not working processes. I'm not doing service. So what does that mean? That means I shouldn't be making these decisions. So this year, I told my team, I said, we have seen so much improvement from what we've learned at BrainShare. And not because of BrainShare. That's not a commercial. From what we've learned being around other people together, I said, we're taking the whole squad. Mm -hmm. And so we're taking the whole squad down there and we're going to learn together. Is that costing us money? Yes. But now we're all, all on the same page, right? And that's what we have to do in order to drive this home. We mm -hmm. have to spend money on people like Jeremy who are not cheap, but damn it. Now we're starting to see that that was not an expense. That was an investment in that mm -hmm. guy, mm -hmm. um, you know, and he loves it, right? This is like a startup to him because he's the first COO, right? So this is like, I get to create everything from the ground. Um, and it's, it's great. Did that answer your question? So you're, so yeah, it did. So you're saying you, you may make the final decision, but all the ideas Sorry, come yes. from your team. And that really is because you're not keeping them in the office. You're, right. you're saying, Hey, I want you to go talk to other agencies and learn what they're doing and then see what sticks and bring it to me. Let's talk about it. And we can figure mm -hmm. out together whether we're going to move forward. And then what are or you... Yeah, go ahead. Or they say to me, they say to me, yeah, Jason, we need this or whatever. And I go, oh, so-and-so knows that. And I get on my email and I click them and I say, hey, so-and-so, we need this. Can you get on an agent? Can you get on and tell them if they need this, right? Mm -hmm. Or how this is going to work. They think they need mm -hmm. this. Is this going to work for us? Mm -hmm. um, think about this. Let me change it. You said, Jason, how do you, with me being the final hammer, how do you get them to make the decision? Think about this. What if we were um, investigating or demoing a product for personal lines. And I brought in my commercial lines person and had them determine if we should use that product or not. That would be very, very silly. Mm -hmm. Okay, take the commercial lines person out and put me in there. Mm 
right? Mm -hmm. This would be silly for me to be making these decisions. Now, at the end of the day, does it fit into the budget? Is it going to be an investment? One of the things Billy Williams has taught me, Cass, is is it going to make you money? Right? Is it going to make you money through efficiencies? Is somehow are you going to outsource? Is it a technology? Something, you know. So, so that would be the best way. So I don't make those decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I want them to do that. I have not been on a demo for for with tech for I don't know a year. Okay. I don't know. So, so you're saying you don't even make the decision? You basically just say like, do we have budget or not? That's do, right. Do we, yeah. do, do we, you're not really even, you're saying, because, okay. And in a way that puts the responsibility to us back on them. Hey mm-hmm. man, you made this decision. You got to own this. All right. Do you want, right. I got the budget, but if that's the situation, like, do you, do you have that conversation with them where you say like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Something Miles Merwin taught me. Um, we don't do this with all of them, but we should, when you hire somebody who's working for you, go take them with you when you're buying the computer, take them mm-hmm. with you when you're buying their chair, mm-hmm. have them sitting in there when you're buying the licenses through GoDaddy or whatever for your outlook, mm-hmm. right? Have them sit there when you're calling PL rating and Vertifor and adding in that extra license, mm-hmm. letting them see that the investment's there. Very same thing here. Just like you just said, you, you're, you're the one that said that you needed it. I didn't, I didn't come to you and say, Hey, we need this. I used to do that. I used to come here from these things and I'd say, Sarah, we need this. You know, do you know how long we've had ePay policy? We've had ePay policy since probably 2018. You know, the first time we started using ePay policy, June of this year, because mm-hmm. Karen, Jeremy came in and said, why are we collecting these payments this way? And I'm like, Oh, well, we got this thing over here. And he's like, Holy, shit, why are we not using this? You know, and now we use it. You know how we use it? We just slide it over an agency. You know? <laughs> I don't mean I to keep being to goofy. It. <laughs> it's it's that simple. It's that yeah. simple. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. I mean, really, it's it's hey, uh, have have your people make have your people be more involved in the decision making process. Get them out of the office. Have them hear what other people are doing. Have them mm-hmm. own that decision and always hold the money. At the end of the day, always mm-hmm. hold the money. So make sure they see this is their right. you know. This is their thing. We're, we're in like business it. for no other thing other than to make a profit. Yeah. Do not believe anything else. Yeah. If you don't make a profit, oh, I'm here to help people. Bullshit. Yeah. You can't help people without money. Yeah. I'm here to make a profit. Yeah. And I do think for those listening who say to themselves, okay, but I can't afford to send my entire team to you know New Orleans to have them. I, there's a lot of other ways to get people involved. I think the principle mm-hmm. is what is most important to take away from this conversation, not the Delta flights to, uh, you know, New Orleans. So right. I love it, dude. Let me just ask one quick question before we, I know you got to go in a bit. Um, Q, you mentioned QQ is your AMS and that mm-hmm. you, you, you are both personal and commercial lines. Correct. So that means you you're using QQ on the commercial line side of things. Yes. <laughs> Okay, that's... Was that weird? That's... Well, I don't think, again, going back to, man, Vertifor is doing all these things. When when it was... When QQ was first brought into the family, it was just a personal line system. Mm-hmm. And and through... Over mm-hmm. the last few years, there's been a lot of development asks to expand that functionality into the commercial line side of things. Mm-hmm. But it's been done sort of under the hood. And... You know, there are agencies on it who are reaping the benefits of it, but most people just don't know that it can mm-hmm. handle, you know, that side of things. So I yeah. just, you know. So let me, here's the question. Once again, I love thinking this way. What the hell can it not handle, right? Um, we, we do direct bill on it. It does commercial lines download. You can do agency bill on it. The only thing you can't do on QQ is you can't do accounting mm-hmm. measures, right? We use QQ mm-hmm. or we use uh, QQ. We use uh, QuickBooks, QuickBooks, right? Yeah. And most people do. But if you if that's really a big deal that you need that accounting, that means you're probably a larger agency and you might want to start looking at AMS 360 anyways, okay? Mm-hmm. But if you're if you're just out there, like, I mean, it does producer commissions. It does agency bill. Um, uh, I'm trying to think like it does the accords. Uh, I think it could be a little bit better on the submission side, but now we have other programs now that uh, work that way. And I see Vertifor eventually probably copying it or buying somebody that does it. 
Um, uh, no, see, that's what I don't understand about it. What it is, is people don't use it for commercial because they're still not downloading commercial. Um, back mm -hmm. in 2006, they thought they had commercial download done. They opened it up and everybody's data got wiped. And still to this day, if you talk to people about why they don't do commercial lines, they'll tell you that exact same thing. And it's like, are you serious? You know, mm -hmm. like, so, um, it does download. I was just with the management system that didn't have this, all the policy lines are built out. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I think, I don't know if like the professional professional apps and stuff are uh, court apps, but uh, they may be, I'm speaking ignorantly, but we use those as supplements anyways. Um, it's got document storage. I'm just trying to think, I mean, you click on it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why somebody wouldn't use it. If, if someone wants to come also to that meeting and tell us the whole group will be there, what does it do on personal lines mm -hmm. that it doesn't do over on commercial lines, right? Mm -hmm. it, it does certificates of insurance. I'm pretty sure if you talk to Sarah or Marvin or Mary Lee, my, my uh, account managers, they may pick on it because, you know, you can always find something that wrong with some piece of program. Yeah. But that's just crazy to me that that that. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, there's definitely uh, there's definitely feeling. And, and here's the thing. I think the the other thing about the QQ commercial line side is it's it, it does really well if you are if if the types of risks that you're placing aren't incredibly complicated and have like for example large vehicle fleets that change every single month then you're going to want to get into AMS 360 but if you know if if you're and I don't want to say relatively simple cuz there is complexity in the commercial functionality but but it can handle quite a bit more than I think what people realize so I just I appreciate you I think it's that. limited. I think it's only limited by, I think there are certain things that hook into AMS 360 that mm -hmm. may not hook into QQ. So that would be mm -hmm. the only limitation if you wanted some of those other products. Mm -hmm. But once again, we write accounts pretty large. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I will say our niche is, is, is social services. So we don't have vehicle schedules as huge, but he just wrote a $300,000 account that has 150 vehicles on it. I don't know of any of my oh. account managers saying, hey, we can't do this. Now, maybe they are, and I yeah. just don't know about this. Shit. But I mean, I'm just I'm just telling you, I mean, I, no one's coming to me saying, why did we go to QQ? We can't do this, yeah. right? Yeah. It's okay. actually, wow, I'm glad we went to QQ because now we can do this is mm -hmm. how it's usually going. So I love it. Um, I love it. Yeah, cool. Weird. All right. Well, weird. For, for people listening, you guys can see how it works um, and see the tech that Jason's yeah. using. In, you invite us. Yes, in the next like 30, 45 days, we'll shoot you with, uh, an email. Okay, I have I have one I'm last question, which is looking at twenty twenty three. I want to know what mm -hmm. your your hey, you've been in this industry a long time. You've been making predictions a long time. I remember where I first mm -hmm. met you actually, uh, it was in the middle of nowhere, Nebraska, and mm -hmm. you and Ryan Hanley were arguing whether Google Plus or Facebook was going to make it. And you were you were on the Facebook side, and Ryan was on the Google Plus side, and I think we all know who won that battle at the end of the day. Wow. Um, yeah. So I would say you're pretty good at making predictions. So I, I do want to ask you about that. One prediction, though, that you did not nail in 2022. Oh, shit. And I'm holding you to this because we made oh, a bet. Wow. We did. We made a bet. And that and bet is coming. I don't even coming. remember what it was, but HubSpot, I remember. HubSpot is coming oh. into the insurance industry and is going to connect with or try to connect with agency management systems. So I heard from three agents that were working on it. I'm not going to bust out two of them, but I will bust out one of them. It was okay. Ryan Hanley, and he's the one who told me. So yeah. if anybody Mr. hears Google this, Plus? he told me that it was going to happen. He knows okay. it if he's All listening right. to this. And All that right. is where I wouldn't have said that unless I had the confidence of him. Now, there may be a reason or whatever, but what was the bet? I can't remember. The Didn't bet I do was, some of the race the bet was that you would do a marathon with me. I, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, well, I'm a man of my bets. So, um, gonna, what's you, ironic is, is I've been I've been running. Um, I, I I was at around 12 minute mile. Uh, yesterday was a major moment for me. I got under nine minutes, and I actually ran an 8:24. And so now I'm going for sevens. I told my wife if I can get anywhere in the sixes, I haven't been under the nine since I was a teenager. I used to run a mile in about five ten, um, and so I was wow. a three minute, three three hundred intermediate uh, hurdler. 
I wow. held the record for like two that's weeks. Impressive. And, and yeah, well, no, that's just what I did. I'm, uh, I was able to run. I'm able, that's one of my things. Like yeah. uh, people say, why are you so skinny? And you shouldn't you get muscle to fight? I said, no, I just outrun people. I mean, I, I, they're not going to catch me. You know what I mean? I just run. So it's always works in school. So, um, but no, yes. Um, uh, <laughs> Yeah, maybe 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 I'll be able to talk you into half a marathon, but uh, I can do a marathon. I need to do one of those in my life. Actually, Here, okay. I mean, how how about this? I'll I'll re up the bet. Let's let's make a twenty twenty three prediction together. Okay, but I'm still held to a half. Okay, I'm still held All to right. a half. All okay, because right. I want right. to be a man of my word. Here. All right. Okay, prediction. Um. Okay, this will be fun. Okay. Um. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. I think that Applied will make a major purchase that will rival um at agency zoom and i i do not think it's going to be in 12 months though i think it's going to be in 18 but i could be wrong okay um uh, so so, <laughs> so you want to make I, this a 2023 2024 bet 18 i think so i'm okay. about positive okay? okay and that would right. be the other half all and right. then i would have to run a full all right right all um, right so so that that is a prediction that's fair um, I also predict the in, the the uprising of indie tech. That's just mm. not a saying. I really truly believe that. Mm. I believe that you will see more RPA automation companies like Adapt API, companies like Quandry. Mm. Those companies are only at their infancy, infancy, and the stuff they can do is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I, it, I mean, I can show your users on that day how uh, we have robots that go and collect claims information, document oh, information, yeah. documents in the middle of the night. They bring it right back to us and give it to a file every day yeah i mean it's unbelievable though so that stuff is going on um i believe embed insurance is big i think that's been put on the back burner though because of some of the tech is kind of they're kind of tightening up a little bit mm -hmm. um i'm going to see that more 24 25 the blockchain and 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 web 3 that is not went away the only mm -hmm. thing is is the feds red ra uh, raised rates and people got away from speculative money they're going to come back the rates will go down we know this we've lived long enough since and mm -hmm. anybody probably listening re watching this, mm -hmm. that will start to come back. Mm -hmm. Embed insurance is just something that we've always done with our referral partners. Mm -hmm. We've just done it in an analog shaking hand way. Mm -hmm. And the guys who are getting 90 to 100 leads a day mm -hmm. from 30 or 40 business partners are automating that through embed insurance and using a system like Agency Zoom to kick that into their pipeline so that we can start that new business workflow I was discussing, right? That's how that's got to be. And if you're not doing that, and so I think you still can get away with the old ways. But once uh, Blake from Personal Lines comes in there and shows your your uh, referral partner how he does it, it's so much easier. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I think that there's some differences. So, so those are some things. Those are definitely two to three years out. But I would say this year you're going to you're going to definitely see that. And blockchain's not open. Contracts is what I think blockchain is going to be used for. And I am not a I'm not a crypto person. Please understand that everybody. I've just studied this. Because I had a real smart guy tell me that he believes that blockchain will be big because of the contracts and that carriers have and different things. And I believe him in that. And I, he's kind of a crypto nut. So yeah, yeah. there's my there's my I, thing. So there. I love it. I would say, man, I agree with most of this. It's hard to form a bet when I, I disagree with anything. But the difference is I don't think you're asking Google Plus for information this time. And this is coming straight. It's, reco from it's recorded. It's so straight. you can hold me to it. <laughs> I'm sure I'll hear from Ryan about that comment too. I um, really need to do, I do really need to do a marathon. And here's the thing. I just can't, okay. I, I can't, I'm moving to Florida. You want to talk about big changes in my life? I'm moving Holy to Florida smokes. in the middle of summer. Yes. So okay. I, okay. I'm, I'm uprooting my family. I'm keeping my house here. I'm going down to Fort Myers and okay. uh, me and my That's wife are going to figure out where we want to live. Yeah. That's a big um, I'm going to, I've got an idea for an agency. Um, and I'm going to have no personal lines. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go get 10 clients and I'm going to have a minimum premium or a minimum revenue of about 60,000 in revenue. Hmm. So that person has to bring 60,000 hmm. in revenue and I'm going to build 10 of them. And if somebody comes along and, and is at 80,000 in revenue and it kicks my lowest one down to 50,000 in revenue, then hmm. I'm going to get rid of that person. And I'm just going to keep 10 and I'm going to see how far I can drive the average revenue margin as high as I can and then retire about three years later. There you go. There you go. Jason, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. And uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, digging into your tech stack in a, in a couple weeks here. Um, 
and I'm really, really excited to be a part of Indie Tech. We'll see you there. I really am. I love helping agents so much that I am. I get off on the fact that I can't wait to see what we invested in, right? I can't wait to show you and have you hear from the people who are out on the ground using this stuff and have them tell you how it was a mess. Then it got scary when we got this stuff because you had to learn this stuff and you give it three weeks like we told them. The habit's been built and and we're still massaging it. We know that our automations, the way they look today, is not how they're going to look at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And I'm challenging my team to say, what can we remove out of this thing, right? Mm -hmm. To to simplify it, to compact it, but still have that kind of uh, service to the customer. So thank you, AZ. Thank you, Sid. Thank you, Vertifor. Also, aka the Big Orange.